People of God, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a delight to welcome you to worship here at Morrisville Presbyterian Church. Whether you are a longtime member or with us for the first time, we welcome you no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of faith. You are welcome here at Morrisville Presbyterian Church, and it is a delight to be worshiping with you this day. In your pew, there is a red friendship folder. We invite you to take that and note your presence with us. Pass it to your neighbors so they can do the same. And if you are visiting, we would love to follow up with you in the coming days, and so would invite you to include enough information so we can do that successfully in the days to come. While that folder is being passed, I just have a few announcements to bring to your attention. The first being that, in case you weren't aware, Advent is right around the corner. Uh, our Advent festival to kick off Advent will be on December 3rd, the first Sunday of Advent. There will be lunch provided, an opportunity to prepare our hearts and, uh, and our homes, really, for Advent. There are crafts and fellowship immediately following worship, along with lunch on December 3rd. So we invite you to mark your calendars for that and join us for our Advent festival. Additionally, you will note we've already got the word Christmas in our bulletin, both our Christmas angel tree and our uh, Boy Scout Troop Christmas tree sale. We invite you to take note of both of those big announcements in your bulletin as those are important ways you can support ministries that are near and dear to us and also support the Boy Scouts who have called this place home for many, many years. On a very different note, in case you have not heard yet, I want to let you know that Jack McCandless, our Minister of Visitation, will be, in his words, re-retiring uh, very soon. Jack, who is here today, is going to be with us through the end of the year. And actually, we had already scheduled him to preach on January 7th, so he will be here one more Sunday. And to be clear, he's not going anywhere, but this allows him, he is stepping away from his formal role with the church, allowing him more freedom and flexibility to be with family and grandchildren, and as someone who benefits from having grandparents around, I am very supportive, though sad, and hope that you will celebrate with him and support him in this new chapter. There will be a formal opportunity to wish him well on January 7th after he preaches that day. Additionally, Lori Jacobson, who is our financial administrator and bookkeeper, has elected to retire. At the end of February 2024, she will see us through the end of our year financials, but she, uh, we are very sad to be saying goodbye to Lori. She too is a new grandmother, and boy does that tug, uh, tug boy does that pull tug at her heart. So uh, we are delighted for her in this next chapter. There will also be opportunities to celebrate and thank Lori for her ministry among us in the new year. But I hope you will take time to thank both of them for their ministries. I do want to let you know personnel has been aware of these realities for some time, and efforts have already been made for uh, wonderful transitional opportunities that we are already pursuing. So please know it is at the forefront of our mind, and we do not want those positions to be unfilled in their entirety. So we are grateful for their work already, proactive work, and hope you will join us in celebrating Jack and Lori. Today, you may have already noticed our worship may look a bit different, but it is no less sacred than it is every other Sunday. Today, the word will be proclaimed through music, but it is no less a proclamation of God's word. Today, we have the opportunity to listen for God's voice in a new way to feel the power of God's justice, the tenderness of God's compassion, and the fullness of God's love, all through the gift of music. So we thank all of these choir members, musicians, and our director of music, Tim Carpenter, for this labor of love that they offer today to the glory of God. Friends, let us join our hearts together and let us worship God together. Thank you.
we invite you to stand and join us in our call to worship as it is printed in your bulletin. You will note this will be done slightly differently today. There is a pulpit side listed, that is this side, and a lectern side that can follow Pastor Alex. So we invite you to join us in our call to worship. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make melody with all my being. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be, be exalted, O God, God, above, above the, the heavens. heavens. Let, Let your, your glory be, be over all, all the earth. earth. Please continue to stand in spirit or body and join together in singing hymn number 385, All People That on Earth Do Dwell. Come before God not as despised sinners, but as beloved children. With the confidence of children of God, let us humbly confess our sin. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. And yet, I try to hide my thoughts and actions from you. I don't even want to acknowledge my faults and fears to myself. But where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and show my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Beloved children of God, remember you are fearfully and wonderfully made by the creator of all that is. Because God knows you, live your life remembering that you are loved 
and forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Reconciled with God, let us joyfully turn to one another and offer each other a sign of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you.
This time I'd love to invite my young friends forward for our time for young disciples. Can I sit right by you? No, you're fine. Is that okay? Hey, have a seat. We're gonna sit on the floor right here. Perfect, perfect. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wasn't that beautiful? Yeah. Woo! Wow, we that was wonderful. Hey, Osias, find a seat, bud. I'm so glad to see everybody. That was spectacular. And I don't know if you know this, but that entire song we just heard is based on Psalm, what was it, 112? Is that right, Mr. Carpenter? And you might say, well, what's Psalm 112? Well, let me, let me start up. Before I get to the Psalms, I, mean, I need to have a question. Have you ever been mad. E I see some hesitancy, but yes. I'm going to ask them out there. You look, you look. Have you ever been mad? Raise your hand. Whoa, look at all those hands. How about, let's watch, let's put it on them today. How about sad? And if you've ever been sad. And oh, how about happy? Raise your hand if you've ever been happy. Oh, look. Oh my gosh, I think just about, well, I think everybody raised their hand for everything. You, have you all ever been sad or happy or mad or all of those things? All, all of them, all of them. What? I just be happy. You're just happy? That, I love you. <laughs> I, I have been all of those things at different times, but one of the really interesting things in the Bible there is a book called Psalms. Sounds like it starts with an S, but it starts with a P. P-S-A-L-M-S. -S, Psalms. And that actually means, that actually means songs. And so if you went to any Bible and you opened it up to the very middle, chances are you would land somewhere in the Psalms. It's a very long book of the Bible. But the thing I love about the Psalms is guess what? In them, there are people who are happy and filled with joy. But guess what else is there? People who are mad. mad. People who are sad. 
And there are people with every emotion in between in the Psalms. In this big, long book of the Bible, there are people sharing all of these feelings with God. And even, I don't know about you, but I was reading along with some of this song we just heard, and there's some mad parts, and there's some happy parts. The Psalms are a place where we are reminded anything we're feeling, mad or sad or happy or frustrated or joyful, anything in between all of those we can bring to God. God delights in the fact that we bring all those things to God. You want to know why? Because that's how much God loves us. God's love for us is so big. It can never be stopped. There's nothing you can do to make it go away. It's so spectacular and beyond anything we can imagine that anything we're feeling, anything we need to talk to God about, we can do that. And that, to me, is one of my favorite things about God, that no matter what I'm experiencing here, I can take all those feelings to God because God loves us that much. And the Psalms which is the book that all of the songs we're going to hear today are coming from. They also remind us anything we need to bring to God, we can. So you might be staying in here to listen to the rest of the music, or you might be going off with some of my friends. Either way, that's fine. But regardless, I want you to remember that when you're happy, or you're sad, or you're frustrated, or you're excited, all of those feelings. Guess who you can talk to about them? God. God. You're absolutely right. No matter what it is. So, next time you have some big feeling, talk to God about it. God is there, and the Psalms remind us each and every time that anything we need to bring to God, we can. So we're going to have a prayer together today. You can all repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God. we thank you that no matter how we're feeling, we can bring those feelings to you. Help us to always remember your love for us. Amen. Thank you all so much. We have Mr. Carpenter has to stay in here today. So, my friend, Miss Rachel, and Mr. Patrick, they are going to take you all out for uh, something a little different today, which will still be really fun. Or you can stay with your parents. Up to you. Have fun. Thanks for coming up. As we turn our hearts and our minds towards Scripture, let's take a moment and prepare ourselves with prayer. Lord God, help us to know your ways, teach us your paths, lead us in your truth and teach us, for you are the God of our salvation, for you we wait all day long. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our scripture reading comes from Psalm 8, verses 1, 5 through 9. Again, you're invited to follow along based on whether you are the pulpit side or the lectern side. O oh God, how full of wonder and splendor you are. And yet you have made me in your image. You have called me your child. You have ordained me your priest. And chosen me as your servant. You have assigned to me the fantastic responsibility of carrying on your creative activity. O oh oh God, God, how, how full, full of wonder and splendor, and splendor you, are. you are. Thank you. 
Amen. As we seek to respond to the word proclaimed, let us stand in spirit or body and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed adapted by Kathleen Henrian as it is printed in your bulletin. Together, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God, our Creator? I believe in God, Creator of all things, whose heavenly song sent the planets into motion. Even when we go astray, God calls us back, showing us the fullness of life and giving us new songs of praise for each and every day. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, who lived for us and among us, healing the sick, easing the burdens of all people, and teaching us the new song of God's kingdom. He showed his love for all God's children in his death and the hope for eternal life in his resurrection. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the breath of life who sings God's grace through all time and space. I listen for the Holy Spirit through the history of songs sung by all the communion of saints and through the unwritten songs of all who are to come in the future. I believe that God has a song for my life and all our lives. Please be seated. Please join me in the responsive Psalter reading as it is printed in your bulletin from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps you will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. shade and a time of trouble. So trusting in that God, let us turn to our God in prayer. Let us pray. As the sounds of summer and fall begin to fade behind the canvas of quieter days, as crickets retreat under the frost, and birds migrate to warmer winds. We give thanks to you, O oh God, that in the absence of sound, you bring forth word in music. For organs remind us that you will not slumber nor sleep. Choirs inspire us to lift our eyes and meet your vision that travels with wings of the rising sun. And when disparate instruments work their way to harmony, we hear your call that faith can find peace amidst discord, both in the world and in our own souls. So whether it be the psalms sung in the temple or your word proclaimed through music, we are moved by you, O God, and we praise you for this good thing. God who creates, who calls, who comes to the cry of your people, we beseech you to hear us this day. For while those assembled here hold celestial praise, we also profess our grief for bodies that we believe are failing, 
for minds that are anxious, for hearts that are weary, for the innocent who continue to bear the brunt of violence amidst the cold calculation of war. We pray that in the maelstrom of justifications we might find clarity, that it is a good thing to cease the violence towards the vulnerable. We pray for Steve in his recovery that he might find good news in his upcoming appointment. We pray for Jack and Lori and others who are stepping away from something that they know into an unknown full of promise and also loss. We pray that in bearing our joys and burdens before you, O oh God, we will walk a little lighter in the life that is set before us. So, Spirit of the living God, let us wear your presence as a cloak as we embark on the week ahead. Fill our ears with the tune of your good news. Create space in our hearts that beat to the drum of your justice and move our being to the rhythm of your never-ending love. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As people of faith, let us stand in spirit or body and sing hymn number 694, Great God of every blessing.
worship God with more than just our prayers and our voices. We offer to him our lives, our gifts, our abilities, and our material goods in hopes that our action might further God's plans for all of us. I'd like to invite the ushers forward to collect the morning offering.
so, um, and Damon said, promise, I said, no. <laughs> so um, one thing that I did not get into the bulletin was that this quartet, as a matter of fact, this quartet that was written was written especially for this occasion, and it was written by Kyle, uh, who is our bass section leader. And um, <laughs> so all of this talent up here is God-given, and we are using it to praise God. So that's our offering. His gifts. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. Please continue to stand and join us singing hymn number 645. Sing praise to God who reigns above. be seated. One of my very favorite things about Tim Carpenter 
is the fact that an incredible amount of work and energy has gone into today, but the only thing he will want you to leave with is that it has all been done for the glory of God and to the glory of God. And so you will note in our charge and blessing, which we will join together in in just a moment, we see resonances of that, and especially in the postlude that our choir will offer, that all that went into today is done to the glory of God. And so let us charge and bless one another as we go out into this day. The Apostle Paul writes, I am therefore determined to pray with my spirit and my mind. And if I sing, I will sing with bold spirit and mind. Let Christ's teaching live in your hearts, making you rich in the true wisdom. Teach and help one another along the right road with your psalms and hymns and Christian songs, singing God's praises with joyful hearts. And whatever you may have to do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, thanking God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Amen.
we say? Amen. Amen.